OK, the other side of the coin. Um, before the season started, a lot of pressure on Jason Demetria for a couple of reasons. Poor back end of the season was a disaster for South. But there was also the Sam situation, yep. which is added. Now, uh, we know this where Josh Mansour's had a bit to say. So all that just at, at tightens. Yep. You know, the, it, it tightens the pressure on the coach. Um, the, my problem with South Coops is the, the problems that exist in the back half of last year are still there now, mm -hmm. right? We'll talk about Sharks in a minute, Coop. But when I see the Sharks play this year, the things that stopped them being successful at the back end of the year, they've addressed. Mm -hmm. They're playing a really physical style. They're playing through an opposition. Where with South, I'm seeing them being dogged by the same problems again. And, you know, Lachlan Lock Illis has been dropped. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think a lot of us saw that coming. Yep. I don't think... They don't so much need a... a you know, player changes, they need a change of system. Yeah. I think there's two parts. I think there's something in the South Sydney spirit that's not there. Like, they had it this time last year. What was it, 11 rounds top of the table flying? Yeah. So there's something there that they haven't fixed. And from a pure football perspective, their edge defence is, is not up to standard. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. leading in that game, I sort of thought that Reese Walsh might carve up. And he did because he is the hardest defender as a, in terms of an edge mm. defence to stop. And if they a passive miss a tackle, he did what he wanted to do. Um, and Dimitri is whew, hell of a lot of pressure around at the moment. Like, enormous. Enormous. There's you know, Latrell, Cody, Cam Murray is the captain. I know they're missing Campbell Graham and Jack White and comes back for his mm. first. But before a ball was kicked, arguably that paper, that team on paper. Mm. Hardly any sort of um, cracks. Yes. But Campbell yeah. Graham out, Jack Whiten out for the first two. I think that's where their edge defence has suffered deeply. Dean Hawkins deserves a chance. I've seen a lot of Dino play um, lower grades. He's a good, good player. I, I, when, I, when I say that they need a change of system, that was the reason that I might have gone. If I was Demetrio, I would have went and pushed Jack in, into six. Mm. And what I mean by that is... One so of the where's Cody we, going? I'd put him seven. Right, okay. Because what, when I say change the system, at the moment, Souths are very much pass. Pass first, pass second, pass third. You know, looking to play around an opposition. I, I think they just need to address that. I think they need to switch a little bit and become a little bit more run-centric. Their two tries after half-time were playing through the opposition. Yeah. And I think putting Whiten into the halves would really straighten them up and simplify their game. I think if they can just simplify their game and be a little bit more run-first... Mm. I think that, well, I know it would re reduce their errors, which is really, it's a big problem. Yeah. And, the other, and if you're reducing your errors, it's putting less pressure on, on your defence. Yeah. I think when you talk about errors, for me, it's more simple than that. Like, the football is like a gold bullion, right? Like, mm. treat it with the respect it is, particularly. And if you have 17 players thinking it's OK if we make one error each, there's 17 errors in a game that you just can't cover. So uh, I understand your theory around Walker and Whiten, but both left-sided players, one's mm -hmm. going to have to play on the right. Who becomes mm -hmm. a dominant kicker? Like, there's a few things yeah. that come into that for me, but I understand where you're coming from. I, I think, look, uh, your leaders are the best players, the highest-paid players because of a reason. They're the most mm -hmm. influential, both good and bad. Yep. So for me right now, the leaders of South Sydney... Need, not be, need to be more influential positively yep. than negatively at the moment. And you can sit and talk around systems or whatever, but ultimately they have a very good team. It's a very good Put team. the people in their best play in their yeah. positions and put the responsibility on those leaders to deliver. Coop, title-winning teams have great talent, yeah. but they've got an underdog mentality. They're aggressive. Yep. You know, like South Sydney could borrow a fair bit from Canberra at the moment. Yep. Yes, Canberra, yes, Canberra, yes, they could. Canberra have come into this season, right? They, they lost Jack, their, their star player, and they've got together yep. with the coach, I with agree. Ricky, yep. and said, right, oh, what do we need to do to be successful? And they know exactly what their identity is. Yep. You know, they're gritty, they're tough, they retain possession, right? They challenge you with their defence, they make you fight for everything, and they're going great. Now, yep. that, that's hard, now that sort of, uh, sort of football is hard to sustain, yep. and you're going to have your down days. But if South Sydney, South Sydney need to start to treat their talent as the icing on the cake. Yes. And when you do the grit, when you do the character stuff, when you do the hardest parts of the game well, all of, all of a sudden the easiest part, like attack and scoring points, mm. works. Canberra Raiders 
didn't win a game more than 12 points last year. Mm. This year, grit, character, determination. They don't have the talent that South Sydney have, but all of a sudden they've won two games this year by more than 12 points. Yeah. Why? Mm. Not because they're any more got an attacking flair. Mm. It's because they've done the hard parts well. The other team surrender and they continue on playing the way that they know because they, we spoke about last week, they know their identity. They do. And I think that's where South Sydney are. Should the senior players have protected Ilias a bit more? I can't. I in can, this so side, I, I can't. Mean, I'm talking about getting him in there and looking after him. Look, yeah, knowing, fair point. Yeah, look, knowing, knowing the way South Sydney did some deep inner reflection work on, on the way that season panned out last year and what do we need to improve on, guys, and from all the feedback I've received is that we need to be more open and honest with each other's performances and when there's an issue, we need to step forward. I can't help but think the leadership group mm. have had a say on this decision. Have they looked at themselves? Do you think they've been honest? I, I see. We spoke about it last night. I, I don't believe... It's one thing to believe, to say you're being honest, and some people might even think they are. Mm. But I also tend to think there might be a couple of people who kept a few things to themselves and haven't really fronted up this year. The, the, the Rabbitohs' problems haven't been resolved from last season, given their, their first two performances. They just have not been fixed. Mm. So you can talk about the fact that they've all... Yeah, you know, let it all out, sat down and talked amongst each other about it. But it doesn't look like when players... When the game plan is different from the game that gets played and the decision is made on the field to play differently, that doesn't suggest to me that they're being honest. How much do the senior players influence Jason Demetrio? How much clout do they have? Because if what you're saying is right, Dave, and I'm sure it is, mm. that they had a role in this decision, then I think it becomes very dangerous and quite murky when other players are making decisions on their teammates. I don't think... I think it's a, coaches seek counsel of the, of the leadership group. I don't, I don't think there's anything sinister towards Lachlan Elias. Well, if you were a player and you knew your teammate was the one that oh, there's nothing, helped there's, get there's, you the sack, you would be dirty. There is nothing wrong, nothing wrong at all with the coach seeking help from the... From the leadership group, that's common, common practice. How much does a coach what I'm listen? Saying, I, I, what, what I mean as well, Bulldog, though, is can you trust that group at the moment? Yeah, is there self interest in the, the decision? With the way making? that they're going for a long period of time now, I, I tend to, I would lean on the players a lot, but in a situation like this and the way they're travelling at the moment, or if I'm the coach, I'm making the decisions. You, yeah, you, I think you he's going to have to step I, forward. I don't think you can lean on them right now. Cameron Murray, yes, every day of the week, mm. every second of the day, because he turns up every week. And you know he's going to give a, a, a stellar performance and give his all. Um, but it's questionable whether you lean on your players there at the moment, from what I see anyway. I don't know. Do you disagree? Well, just again, I'm only going on what I know. And, and it was all about, guys, we need to be more open and honest with each other, right? And, and, and I would think with such a major decision on dropping the halfback, I can't get away from the fact that, OK, like it or not, there'd be players that you're pointing to yeah. that you don't believe probably deserve that yeah. say. But... That's, that's the way I, mean, I believe it. You talk to other clubs, though, and, and guys drive the culture, drive the culture. And there is sometimes a brutal honesty there. Yeah, Melbourne are famous for it. Melbourne are the best at, at, at keeping each other accountable with their performance. That's why Melbourne has been so success, successful for so long, because their honesty is 20-20 in regard to each other. Mm. And, the, and the leadership group at Melbourne was the best we've seen in two decades. I don't know if South have got the same... Mm transparency with the decisions that they make and the, and the way that they, they try to drive the team. I, I just, it's not there. The, as I said, you can't sit there and work a game plan and then the, a change is on the field because a couple of guys want to change things. It just can't work that way. And it should be, should be dealt with this week now. Why did that happen? What's happened to it? Mm. How come you guys decide to take it upon yourselves? Elias sits there and he loses all control when he gets out on the field. He runs uh, during the week, all the week of training. He runs a session. He's the playmaker. He gets on the field and he loses that control. Don't keep telling me that they're being honest about this mm. and that it's up front and it's all hunky dory. There's something wrong there. And until they sit down, and it's got to come from someone in authority who sits down and says, "Guys, let's just clear it out here and figure it out." But at the moment, everyone's just pretending it's all honest and it's all. Rubbish.